Every week I help you find fun places to go with friends and family here in Jacks. I talk about local food, local craft beer, and local events. That's what I do. I know Jacks. Eat local, drink local, and be local. There are a lot of happenings and events this time of year because we're still in fall festival season, but we're also getting closer and closer to the holidays. Well, this week I have a great show lined up for you. And as usual, I'll be talking about upcoming craft beer happenings and about upcoming events. And I'm also going to give you all the details about the upcoming I Know Jack's birthday dinner. This year we're celebrating seven years on the air with a big dinner at Blue Bamboo with Chef Dennis. And when I say big, I mean huge. <laughs> I'll talk more about that, but since we're on the topic of food already, let's start with that. This week I'm visiting Celestia Mobley at her restaurant, Celestia's Coastal Cuisine. Celestia and I have been doing cooking demos together at the Home and Patio Show a few times, or maybe I should say she's been cooking and I've been tasting. <laughs> and when you see the kind of food that she's making at Celestia's Coastal Cuisine, I'm sure you're going to want to taste it too. I'm up at Celestia's Coastal Cuisine up on the north side checking out some awesome seafood. It's been about 15 months ago I started Celestia's Coastal Cuisine. Um, it started with just a desire to do something um, small, intimate, near my house, which I'm two miles away. Um, and I was going to stay at the Potter's House Soul Food Bistro because, you know, executive chef there, nice, beautiful office, didn't really have to do much but counsel people and do, you know, pretty easy things. But then Celestia's Coastal Cuisine became so busy so it was taking up my time. And yeah. you know, in Jacksonville, it's really hard to find um, really good help in the beginning. You have to do a lot of training, so I really need to be here. Yeah. So this has been my baby for the last 15 months. It's starting to walk a little bit, and I'm starting to be able to do things, but that's what I started. It's kind of like a retirement plan. Instead of getting a <laughs> Porsche or the midlife crisis Porsche and all that, I decided to get a you restaurant in my house. <laughs> what type of food do you specialize in here? Well, we. Fresh local seafood. Um, we get um, blue crabs on Thursday, which we have tonight. Um, we do fresh red snapper. The snapper we take, we put a cornmeal type breading on it. Um, born and raised in Florida, that was how my mom always fried fish was with like a cornmeal batter. So I take it and I score it because they're pretty big. They're like this, and sometimes they're like this. But we take and score it so that it can cook to the bone and won't get too dried out. Right. Trying to cook it through everything. And um, so, yeah, we take it fried and season it and put the cornmeal batter on it. Wonderful. And then shrimp is the other thing, right? Talk to me about your famous shrimp. Yeah, yeah. Um, and how good is that shrimp again? They're very good. <laughs> That's our biggest seller. And they're, they're, they're pretty um, simple. We don't put a lot of breading on them because we want the flavor of the shrimp to come off. But I have some amazing sauces. We make our own tartar sauce, but I make a roumalade sauce. Um, people call it everything. Can I get some more of that pink sauce? Can I get some more of the, the Asian, they call it the Asian <laughs> sauce. Um, the shrimp sauce is not shrimp sauce, but it's roumoulade, but it's very like a spicy roumoulade, yeah. so it has like a pink hue to it, and it's really good to dip the shrimp into it. And then I have an appetizer that I've been doing for at least the last seven years, which is oxtail wontons, and that's what I'm kind of known for besides my mac and cheese. Okay. And the oxtails we take and we have, you know, we make a mural par and we we'll braise it for a very long time and they become really tender. So we take the pieces that are left over from what we don't sell, which we sell oxtails on Sunday. We don't sell them during the week. Yeah. So what's not selling, we mix it with cream cheese and some more black pepper and different spices and wrap it in a wonton. So it's very labor intensive yeah. because you have to wrap each one and seal it and all. So but they're very good. And we um, serve it with a sweet chili sauce. Okay, we open from 11 to 9. On Tuesday nights, we do karaoke. On Wednesday night, we do live music with Monique, who is a, just a beautiful spirit. I love her. And um, we have blue crabs. That's our special on Thursday nights. Um, Friday nights, we just have, like we say, Fish Fry Friday. Um, 
and then Saturday is just all day from 11 to 9 and then Sunday we do from 11 to 5 but we do what we call Sunday supper which has chitlins <laughs> that's something that's a southern a thing you either love food. it or you hate it yeah, yeah. so we do the soul food the chitlins the oxtails fried and smothered pork chops collard greens different things like that so what i'm hearing is i need to come on sunday yes <laughs> yes like miss celeste you said the blue crab plate is the way to go snapper i'm sorry can't go wrong with that and check out these beautiful sides she's known for her mac and cheese shrimp I'm saying, gotta have it. And oxtail dumplings, uh-huh. See you at Celestia's Coastal Cuisine. The food at Celestia's is just awesome, so I can really, really recommend it. Next, we're going to head over to Brews to talk about upcoming craft beer happenings. I just wanted to let you know that I'm now sending out The Insider every Tuesday. You'll get tips and ideas for cool things to do, plus you'll find out what I'm up to and where we're filming next, that kind of stuff. You can subscribe to The Insider on my website at iknowjax.com. Every week I take a look at what's happening in the craft beer scene in the Jacksonville area. I'm at Brews in Atlantic Beach and today I'm having a Raspberry Berliner from Florida Avenue. The temperature is a little bit cooler now so I don't feel completely wrong by talking about holiday events and events that can warm you up a bit. The temperature doesn't have to drop that much for Floridians to get the cold chill. So here's an event that will keep you toasty warm. It's called Flannel Friday Party, and this is held at Brews and Bartram Park. Come out dress in your best lumberjack flannel or, or even something basic. Heck, maybe I could wear my flannel pajama pants. It'd be worth the strange looks because you get a dollar off stouts and seasonals when you wear flannels on Friday. And I love my stouts. That's at Brews and Bartram Park, Friday, November 16th from 7 to 10 p.m. Every year, the city of St. Augustine gets dressed in its holiday finest for the Night of Lights. Lots of people travel to St. Augustine during this time of year, and the local breweries come together to host a special promotion, Night of Pints. This sounds like a cool way to get to know the local breweries in St. Augustine. Each brewery is teaming up to create seasonal, one-of-a-kind collaboration beers that will showcase the unique beer styles of each brewmaster. Here are the participants. Ancient City Brewing Downtown, Bog Brewing Company, Dog Rose Brewing, and Old Coast Ales. A special Night of Pints t-shirt goes on sale on November 16th. Buy the $30 t-shirt to receive one draft beer on the house at each brewery. So this season, combine holiday festivities and brewery exploration in St. Augustine. I love animals, which is why I want to mention this event. It's called Pints for Pets. This is an annual fundraiser for the Friends of Clay County Animals held at Bold City Brewery on Russell Street. Stop by, have a great pint of craft beer, and support a good cause. That's at Bold City Brewery on November 17th from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Here's an event perfect for cooler fall weather. Here at Brews in Atlantic Beach, it's time for the second annual Chili Cook-Off on November 17th. Chili and beer, you really can't go wrong with that. There will be prizes for the winner, fun giveaways, and free food. Now, if you have an amazing chili recipe that you want to compete with, check out Bruce's Facebook page for information on how to sign up to compete. Now, I love chili, so I'm definitely putting this one on my calendar, and I suggest that you do the same. That's it for local craft beer news for this week. If you'd like tasty craft brews like this Raspberry Berliner from Florida Avenue, visit Brews right here in Atlantic Beach or Brews in Bartram Park. Cheers. Our mission is to bring the best variety of ice cold craft keg beer to take home in a growler. This week, True Kitchen in St. John's Town Center opened its doors. The restaurant has moved in right next to Capitol Grill. Their food is super fresh and super tasty. Take a look.
So what makes True Food Kitchen special? It really starts uh, with our environment, and so we have a light, bright environment. We believe that food should make you feel better, not worse, and that starts with that environment. And then it's our staff. We have wonderful employees who work here in Jacksonville. We've hired over 130 people in Jacksonville to open this restaurant with us. And finally, at the heart of True Food is the food and the food is really, really special. So not only is it absolutely delicious and something that you wouldn't necessarily make at home, something you might discover or explore, but it's also very healthy for you. True Food Kitchen is really special. You know, it's a, a healthy, healthy inspired cuisine based around chef driven objects. Um, we work off of Dr. Andrew Weil's anti-inflammatory diet you know, while revolving around seasonality ingredients. Um, this is our responsibly sourced striped bass um, with uh, charred broccolini, an African super grain called fonio, which actually has more nutrient than any other grain, so any more than a quinoa or a farro or a spelt. Um, we incorporate some organic tomatoes, and then we fold in a dried currant a caper and a fennel. So we have a number of items on our menu that are already prepared for special dietary needs. So we have a number of vegan entrees, vegetarian, gluten-free, and then any other allergy you have or dietary preference you have, we will make it work as well. My daughter has an intolerance and you know it's, it's, it's terrifying sometimes to go somewhere and, and not be able to eat or not feel like it's safe to eat there because you're not sure what's going on. And um, you know as chefs I think we pride ourselves on being able to actually promise and assure that we know exactly every single ingredient that's going into something. Here at I Know Jacks, we do our best to support local businesses in the community. Visit our website to find out how we can help promote your business on iknowjacks.com. Call Joe directly at 904-345-0755 or visit iknowjacks.com slash advertising. So on November 5th, 2011, I Know Jax aired for the very first time. And here we are over seven years later and we're gonna do a big celebratory dinner. And I thought, where are we gonna do this? We did a dinner with you last year and that was amazing. That was and our, your first dinner. It was, yeah, and, and I said, well, we gotta do that again. And I said, Dennis, the challenge is there. And you came up with this awesome idea. Tell everybody about the menu. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, in seven years, a lot happens, and a lot happens in food. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, let's do food from the last seven years. And, you know, these trendy food items that we've had, we've had um, donut bread pudding, and we've had, um, you know, chopped salads in a mason jar, <laughs> and um, what else? Farmhouse burger, that's another big one over the last seven years and uh, you know just fun food so many fun food. you left out like the star of the show well the star <laughs> of our show of course this year we uh, blue bamboo and and dennis chan won a big award for the sunshine state orange crunch cake so we're going to include that in our dinner also i say star of the show because all right the other things are awesome they really are but this one got national attention so we're going to be able to have that and eat it here in the dinner and seven i mean seven courses and and you're doing it my favorite way to eat oh yes family style for sure for sure chef dennis has come up with an amazing menu for our birthday we're taking a trip down memory lane and looking at different dishes that became instantly famous through instagram and pinterest during the seven years i know jacks has been alive when I think of these things, I'm thinking of stuff like cold brew and matcha tea, unicorn drinks, Instapot or charcoal, anything because that's what pops up in my Instagram account. <laughs> but one vegetable that became incredibly popular was the avocado. It's become the healthy vegetable of choice. There are more than 50,000 posts with the hashtag avocado toast, proof we're using avocado for a lot more than just guac. Avocado toast is going to be one of the dishes, but Dennis is adding an extra twist. He's doing avocado toast with shrimp. We're also having mason jar chopped salad. And another dish that reached its popularity dur during the seven years is the slider. Now every restaurant has to do 
mini burgers. And I think sliders have been around for a while. I used to love going to White Castle when I was younger and remember when Harold and Kumar went to White Castle? I might be getting off track. Our sliders are vastly different from White Castle's. These ones are handmade, super delicious farmhouse burger sliders. But we didn't stop there. Dennis has added a crowd favorite, lobster mac and cheese. And next up, one of my favorite dishes ever, chicken and waffles. And then it's time for dessert. And first up there is donut bread pudding that's definitely, well, a new one for me. We're also going to have the now world famous Sunshine State Mandarin Orange Cake. Chef Dennis won a prestigious national competition with this cake and it's fantastic. Everything is served family style, which means you get a big plate of food on the table so nobody is going to leave hungry, I promise. So go grab your tickets at iknowjacks.com. On Wednesdays, I'm starting to do a thing I call the Hump Day Update. This is going to be a short video about, well, whatever I think would be fun to talk about. What's been happening lately, what's planned for the weekend, and sometimes I might even include an interview or other stories. Honestly, I'm not sure what I'm going to do on Hump Day Updates, but I'll be doing it every week and it'll be different. You'll be able to watch the Hump Day video directly on the I Know Jack's website, on my Facebook page, or on YouTube, and that's of course happening on Wednesdays. <laughs> and if you are an event organizer and you have information about an event that you think our viewers need to find out about, make sure to send your press kit to me the sooner the better. You can find more information about that on iknowjacks.com. It's a busy time of year and this week I have an action-packed calendar for you so I'm not going to waste any time. Let's hop right in. First up, the King and I. I'm of course talking about the well-known Roger and Hammerstein musical that's coming to the Times Union Center this week. The King and I is performing in Jacksonville November 13th through November 18th. I always loved the movie Napoleon Dynamite, but when my little sisters saw it, all of them insisted that I and Napoleon not only looked alike, but acted alike. I don't know about that. But in any case, you can watch the movie at the St. Augustine Amphitheater on November 14th. And after the movie, there'll be a Q&A with Napoleon himself, John Heater, plus other members of the cast will be in attendance. If you're a fan of the 2004 film, you don't want to miss this one. That's at the St. Augustine Amphitheater, November 14th. The most important thing of the week happens on November 15th, and this is an event I can guarantee you that I will be attending no matter what. Can't miss this one. It's of course the I Know Jack's birthday dinner at Blue Bamboo on November 15th. If you don't wanna miss this one, you can get your tickets at iknowjacks.com. We have another really big festival coming this week. It's the Tiny House Festival that's coming back to the St. John's Fairgrounds. In 2016 and 17, this festival broke the world record with 60,000 attendees. Lots of tiny houses, micro houses, workshops, vendors, and more. The Tiny House Festival takes place November 16th through 18th. In Mandarin, there's an awesome chili cook-off. I've been a judge at this event for the past two years and I always love tasting the chili, so it's definitely a fun event. The Mandarin Fall Festival and Chili Cook-Off takes place at River Place Shopping Place in Mandarin, November 17th from 11 to 3 p.m. Come see me. On Saturday, November 17th, another very popular annual street festival returns. It's the Riverside Wine Fest. The Wine Fest tasting is $35 and features over 300 wines featuring well-known and not so well-known varietals from around the world. There's also food trucks and entertainment, and you can get your tickets at RiversideWineFest.com. For you football fans out there, here's an interesting event at Daly's Place. The Jacksonville Symphony Orchestra is going to be performing while they show clips from the movie Rudy on the screen. It's actually the 25th anniversary of the film this year. Rudy in concert at Daly's Place on Saturday, November 17th at 7.30 p.m. If you travel north, just across the border to Georgia, they have a big festival there too. It's the biggest event of the year in Kingsland, Georgia, the annual Catfish Festival. You have to taste the yummy catfish served at this event. The catfish is prepared according to a secret recipe that's been used for years. And there's no better way to enjoy traditional southern fried catfish than with Hush Puppies, Grits, Coleslaw, and Sweet Tea. This is one of those homegrown small town festivals where the whole county shows up. Expect lots of people, arts and crafts, food, and of course catfish. 
The Catfish Festival takes place November 17th in downtown Kingsland. For more details and more happenings, refer to my post with the fun little name, Fun Things to Do in November, on iknowjax.com. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Remember to go to iknowjax.com and get your tickets for our big birthday dinner on November 15th. Don't wait with that because seating is limited. I will be back next week with another episode of I Know Jax, but until then, I'll see you on the internet.